Hello everyone. Welcome to Gentle Painting. I'm just going to give uh, everybody a moment to uh, log in. There were a lot of people who had confirmed in the um, confirmed in the uh, event and a lot of people asking questions so I thought uh, let's just give everybody a moment to check in. I'm just going to turn the camera onto the painting for a moment while I answer a few questions. There's a few questions coming in about how to join us so just give me one moment. So welcome to anybody who's joining me already. I just have a few people who are having trouble logging in or finding us. So I'm just taking a moment um, to just get everybody logged in and we can give them probably another five minutes to find us. And while we're waiting, maybe uh, let me know where you're from. As I'm always interested in learning more about you guys and uh, how far the, the video reaches. I think that's uh, pretty incredible sometimes how far people uh, in the world join us from. It's acrylic paint. I'm going to try to answer some of your questions here. If you go to the event page, it'll list all the colors you need as well. I'll go over a little bit of that too. Hi Jennifer. Hi Tammy. Hi Tammy and Tracy. Ooh, New Brunswick. Cool. Teresa or Teresa. And okay, it looks like the people who are having um, a little bit of trouble finding us have found us. That's good. going to give them like three more minutes. And um, if you're just joining us, uh, let me know where you're from. And also uh, how you're feeling today. Are you excited to take this class and learn something new? Are you a little nervous? Um, is there a little bit of anxiety there? Hi, Silvana. I'm glad you're excited. That's awesome. Glad you found us. Hi, Joanne from Cambridge. Allison from Scarborough. Good afternoon. You're very welcome and welcome to the paint class. <clears throat> Hi, Becky. Okay, great. So I'm gonna turn the camera back to me now. This is me, for those of you who joined us while it was on the, the painting. Um, <clears throat> So I am leaving. I'm just going to take a sip of my coffee here. I hope you guys made yourselves a tea or have something nice to drink. This is my favorite mug. It's from uh, Third Space um, Studio in St. Catharines. It's beautiful. It was a gift. Thank you, Christina. <clears throat> so um, 
I'm leaving uh, the wellness activity for today for the Attachment Niagara um, Facebook page. And if you are here for your first time or you haven't heard about Attach previously, um, it's the not-for-profit uh, piece of the um, Attachment and Trauma Treatment Centre for Healing uh, located in St. Catharines, Ontario. And I volunteer there on the events and uh, fundraising committee, but I also do uh, the gentle painting workshop and I uh, help to coordinate the uh, volunteers who do the other wellness workshops. So if you're new, um, <clears throat> uh, check out our, uh, our calendar of events. Uh, August is coming out soon, so. But we do have a few more planned for this month. Okay, so gentle painting, uh, it's, a it's a take on the traditional paint painting tutorials. I, um, I did do a lot of social painting classes in the past. Um, I've done a lot of rec-based painting classes with children, but I've also written and facilitated some uh, therapeutic arts-based uh, programming for not-for-profits and community agencies. I, ha I have a diploma in social service worker and I was a so social service worker for six and a half years and I continue in the community to uh, do those types of activities. And I am a self-taught artist, so the tips and tricks I'm giving you today are things that I've picked up along the way. I've been painting for uh, about ten and a half years uh, seriously. Um, entering into professional pursuits of it for about six years now. I am also a psychology student in pursuit of certification as an art therapist. So that's a little bit about me and if you want to know more you can follow along on my Art by Rianne and Barry Facebook group or I'll give you my website at the end of the video too. Now um, gentle painting uh, is a lot like the painting tutorials. I'm going to guide you through every step of the way but I've also incorporated some uh, intentional mindfulness into the activity. Now I wanted to just start by, uh, I'm going to turn the camera back to the paintings now. <clears throat> There's a couple here because I've done this class a couple times now, so bear with me here as I turn and adjust. I know it's kind of awkward. So um, now this class is full of uh, lots of different ways that you can incorporate your own take on it. So this is just one version and they're all a little bit the same of course um, but then there's uh, there's different versions that you know different amounts of flowers, how much green you want to add, things like that so you'll see there's room for just creativity and exploring. Now I was kind of obsessed with Monet for a while now because um, I like his Impressionism techniques that he used. A lot of Impressionist painters sort of used a touch effect where um, you're just really <clears throat> touching the painting. You're not necessarily painting something that's matte in all one color and then adding highlights and things like that. So it's a really creative flow and I, and I like that. It keeps my attention. Um, also, uh, for me, uh, it's a lot of blending on the canvas, which intrigues me rather than color theory and blending colors on a plate. Uh, when Impressionism, uh, well, when Monet, when Monet was really um, coming into his own, uh, was during the Victorian era, and that's when uh, paint was in, uh, first in tubes. So, you know, it was pretty easy for people to, uh, for artists to grab a few tubes and brushes, um, go down to the park and paint what they saw. And of course, um, you're not sitting in a studio for hours, so it was a very quick process. So today will take about two and a half hours, but um, once you learn these techniques, I really encourage you to go to the park and uh, paint what you see. Also during that period of time, the flat brush had just come out as well. Up until that time, they were really using round brushes. So this supported a lot of different types of strokes that they hadn't had previously. So. Uh, Monet is really interesting to me, uh, the background of it, as well as just uh, his paintings. Um, they're just so beautiful from far away. There's this gorgeousness to them. It, 
your mind fills in the blanks almost but then up close they're just super chaotic and they don't really make sense if you're looking for perfection this is going to be a tough one for you to uh, to complete with me so I'll go over the supplies first um, we're going to need of course a flat flat brush and then around this one is a size 7 but anything with a good point on it should work for you and then I like to use this one inch paintbrush but if you don't have this just find something that's close in your in your collection of brushes there next this is my paint palette you can see I've added quite a bit of these four colors uh, brilliant blue brilliant yellow green uh, titanium white and a tiny bit of purple and a tiny bit of red we won't even be using much of those so make sure you have all of those out on your on your plate next um, some clean water for rinsing your brush off and a rag I find rags work a lot better than paper towel paper towel works but rags you can really kind of you know mess with them they're not going to tear and get uh, pretty useless in one use so um, I like to use those the next thing I really like is having a little water bottle on hand to spritz my painting with or uh, spritz my my acrylic paints to get them reactivated a little bit if you don't have a spritz bottle that's okay you just get a second glass of clean water and that's because if you're rinsing your blue brush off in your water and your water's all blue and mucky and you go to add it to a white, you're going to end up with blue instead of watered down white. So that's my tip. So if you need to get up and run and get some water, um, I'll give you some time to do that. It's interesting in um, a painting like this, you're really you're going to determine what's important to you, right? So anything that's not important, you don't spend too much time on it. But for me, I find when I'm teaching this class, the water lilies, everybody wants to know, you know, spend a little bit more time on the water lilies. And they are very, very simple to do. Um, but I will spend a little bit of time right now going over some of the brush strokes before we go onto the canvas. I just like to, uh, to do that sorry about that I was adjusting my camera um, I like to do that because I think it relieves a little bit of anxiety for first-time painters and so I'm gonna just uh, go ahead and uh, rip out a piece of paper from my dollar store Monet style sketchbook any white paper will do and so that you can see it better I'm going to uh, clip it right here. I might do a little bit more adjustment with my camera because I feel we can get even closer. There we go. Perfect. So, if you Yes, I will save the, uh, sorry, Sue, I will save the video and I upload it onto my YouTube actually a couple days afterwards as well. So I'll give you all that information at the end and I'll write it also in the comments at the end. Is it, um, are you, are you able to hear me everyone? There's a few comments too about that. So if you can hear me, just uh, give me a thumbs up. Also, if you're just joining us, please go ahead and let us know where you're from and also how you're doing today. I'll try to keep an eye on the try to keep an eye on the comments as they come in. It might be a little tough for me, but I'll try to keep up.
what I can do is turn the, oh, hi Gail from Ohio. Nice to have you with us in Niagara Falls today. Great, okay. So I did turn the music down a little bit and I'll turn that up during the periods of time where we're just sort of painting together and I don't have any comments or suggestions to, uh, to give you guys. Um, the first thing I wanted to do is give you a little bit of a, of a sneak peek on how we're going to create some of these water lilies and uh, lily pads. So the first thing I have uh, just a piece of paper here and um, my flat brush and I'm going to just dip it in some just plain old green. Now it's all about perspective as well for this painting so um, if we say that you know our horizon line or our, our viewpoint is going to be there you put just a tiny dot and of course as you get closer the circles get a little bit bigger so the ones at the front will really just you can see it's just a swipe so I've got my perspective and that's the, really the first thing you need to lay down is just uh, measuring what it would look for you. You know, these paintings, it's almost like you're inside of them, standing at the edge of a pond. And you also, you know, you need to put it in the perspective or else it, it is just going to look like a big um, mess of greens and blues. But with this brush, and the Impressionists used a lot of large brushes for this type of work. They didn't necessarily switch up their brushes a lot. Um, you just sort of load your brush up and it's just touching, touching lightly. And you're putting in sort of like just the background pieces. Now, I don't want you, if you're going on paper right now, don't go too far off the edge. You don't want to get it on the canvas or make sure you have something underneath. But most of the time too, you go right off the edge so that it looks like there's some, you know, the world is just continues. Um, but of course at the beginning, um, or at the front, your circles are going to be larger and they're going to be smaller as you go back. And it's just this touch, touch. So you just have to kind of be cognizant. You know, if you make a mistake and you do something big like that, that's okay because um, we're going to end up mixing some yellow with green at some point and we can break it up again by just touching that color in. So if you make a mistake, you make something too big, it's okay, let it dry and we'll come back over top of it. And uh, if you're just joining us, we're just practicing on paper, I'm just giving a few pointers and tips. And then of course, this is your under color, so of course you're just going to touch on top as well. So you can see it's pretty freeing how you do this uh, Impressionism style. It's not got a lot to do with preciseness. Now I'm going to move the camera even closer so you can see even better. There we go. Um, this part you don't have to keep up for, uh, but uh, it's just some tips and tricks. If you want to try some of this out, you can. And yes, I always, uh, if you want to follow along and watch today and then paint another day, the video will be available on this um, um, this page or this group, but I also save it to um, my Art by Rhiannon Berry um, and website, uh, Facebook group and website. So, okay, so this is just sort of um, just a little lesson. This is paper, of course, again, um, but it's just a little lesson. It's just a little bit of dabbing and up to you to say, you know what, I think some lily pads live there. I think some live over here and where is it in the painting? I'm going to start bigger and go smaller so if these ones are this size these have to be if they're a little bit further back they have to be a tiny little bit smaller than these right that's where perspective comes in and then of course if they're in the front you're gonna put really big strokes and we'll add highlights and we'll go over all of that too but this is just really a lesson in perspective And then um, I'm taking my round brush now and I'm just going to give you a little bit of an idea of how to make 
some of the water lilies. So um, I'm dipping my pointed end into my white and the first the furthest uh, lilies are going to just be a dot. So if they're really far back, they're just going to be a dot. Of course, this isn't the finished product, but this is just to give you an idea. And then as they come forward, they get a little bit bigger, of course, right? So just like um, the lily pads, they end up a little bit larger as you come forward. This one's picked up a little bit of green because I didn't let it dry. But um, I'll show you, you can easily just add a little bit of red to this. And see that point, it just sort of, you just maybe go up one, two, three, four, five, you know, and then you have a water lily. So I'll do that larger. So water lilies are pretty easy, the abstract water lilies anyway. So you're really just kind of one, two, three, four, you're letting the brush do the work for you. And then of course you can add a little bit off to the side too. If you want one that's kind of opening up, maybe just something like that. So you can see it's it's very um, abstract and as we go along you're going to see me dabbing a lot. So don't be too um, hard on yourself if it doesn't look exactly like mine right off the bat. But you can see this is what I'm playing with, just these little dab motions little touch motions and um, what I'll do is I'll bring up this so you can see you can see the similarities and should give you an idea of really the illusion that happens in in impressionism so if you, I have a friend who studied art and she says she's seen some of the Monet's and they were not impressive up close. They were just, just paint splattered all over the place it looked like. And, um, but when you stand very far away from them, they're gorgeous. So that's what we're going to do today. I'm going to ask you to stand up a couple times and just sort of judge your painting. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead now and um, with my spray bottle, I'm going to spray my canvas. And this is just to help the paint move and glide over the canvas more easy. My studio is really hot so I put a few extra sprays. If you don't have a spray bottle and you just want, um, and you just have some clean water, just dip your brush into the clean water and add a little bit. If it's dripping, you don't want that. So obviously I have a lot on here now, but you can easily just smooth it around. You don't want dripping though. So go ahead and add some water. I am using a 16 by 20 canvas. So if I am going too fast for you, I apologize. I am giving breaks in between the instructions. One trick I would say is don't try to paint as I'm painting maybe watch what I do and then try it when I give you the break and also stand up stretch out your shoulders now's a good time to stretch take a deep breath let it out this is uh, an exercise in you know spending some time doing something for yourself um, we're not going to take ourselves too seriously here. Um, we want to enjoy the time we've put aside for ourselves and um, 
if at the end of your first time doing this painting, it doesn't turn out exactly how you expected, that's okay. You'll have the tools now to explore doing it again. And just like anything else in life, painting, uh, the more you do it, the better you become at it, especially if you're trying something new and a new technique. Okay, so armed with um, my painter's brush, I'm going to dip it in my water, get it wet. I'm going to grab some of this blue, blue paint, and I'm going to sort of apply it to the canvas on the top part. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to brush it in yet, I'm just going to sort of put it on there. So up and down streaks. Some of them are thicker than others. In Impressionism, sometimes the canvas can poke through. Some areas have thick paint on them, others have really thin paint. So this is really about a technique. Now this is not a sky, this is um, going to end up being a reflection of the sky. Um, a lot of times Monet's paintings didn't include a sky at all. Okay, so with my same brush, I'm going to grab a little bit of the yellow. Um, I'm going to put a few streaks of yellow. You want them sporadic though, so don't just put them you know, the same distance apart and not too, too much, not as much as the blue. And when you're done putting that on, rinse your brush off and then get any excess water out on your paper towel or your rag. So I am getting, see it doesn't have to be completely dry, but just get the excess out so it doesn't end up dripping um, on your painting. Now I've got a line of blue and some yellow and I'm going to go back and forth like this. I'm going to blend those colors and as I do it, I'm going to add a little bit more. So here's a few more streaks. Now mine is not blending as nicely as I wanted, so I have the choice. I can spray a little bit more water on my canvas or I can add a little bit more water to my blue and my yellow. My studio is pretty hot, like I said, so often my paint dries out pretty quickly. Okay, so adding blue. You're gonna need to add a little bit more each time. And eventually we will have all of this covered. If you need to add more blue to your plate, Please do. And we want little pieces and parts to stick out. We don't want it completely covered. That's kind of why we're adding it and then pulling it the opposite direction. And we don't have too much water on our brush.
if you want as you're going you can get your edges of your canvas that way if you want to hang it you won't necessarily need a frame if you want to get them as you're going it's a good idea I'm gonna add some more yellow now adding some blue so you might have dollar store paint and it's probably a lot more watered down than my stuff is so if you're noticing a difference between the way my paint lies and yours does um, that might be why that's why I'm adding water too much water is not a good thing usually you don't want to go over a 30 percent uh, dilution because it'll have trouble sticking to the canvas. I'm just going to add some more, some more blue. You can go down a little bit on the edges. Anywhere where it hasn't been covered yet, just add a few dollops of the blue and then you're going to go back and forth, sort of like you're mowing the grass. You don't want to over mix it. You want the effect to come out. This is sort of like a shimmer in the water. I'm going to add a few more pieces of the blue. And then I'm going to go around and just sort of dab in any white spots. Now if yours is really wet at this point, um, this sort of lightly going over it to create a shimmer in the water may not work for you yet. You might just have to let it dry and then in a few moments come back with a touch of yellow and then do it. Okay, I'm just going to take a look at the comments again and see if anybody has anything that I need to answer. Does anybody want to um, take a picture of theirs and share it or does anybody have any questions or need any tips? Not yet. All right. I'm going to, um, what I'm going to do is I have some nice watered down blue here. It's, it's still thick enough, but it's watered down quite a bit. And like I said, I'm just going to sort of go into those areas that are still pretty white. And try to just shimmy my brush in a little bit like that. So just like this. So with this painting, we'll see a lot of um, horizontal and vertical lines. And sometimes if it's wet, you might be like, mm, I don't know, I don't think that's going to look good. But then when it dries, it looks great. So give your paint a, a chance to show you what it can do.
And like I said, don't be afraid of putting more paint on your plate. This one does take quite a bit of product. <clears throat> yes, Sue, the video um, will be available. I don't know if I answered that question already. So we don't delete it off this group page. If you wanted to watch uh, later on, and as well, I end up putting it on my YouTube channel, uh, which is uh, B Whimsy Art, and then also my web page www.bwhimsy so b e w h i m i artloft.ca yeah no problem yeah i know sometimes it, i like to if i'm going to watch a tutorial video i actually i prefer watching it all the way through once and fast forwarding through certain parts and then attempting to do it and having it playing <clears throat> sort of in the background while i'm doing it so i'm just sort of shimmying this color into the grooves of the canvas at this point. I'm not going to add more blue um, and that's because that one there's enough on there already but also because some parts I want to be thick and some parts I do want to be thin so the canvas is appearing to poke through a little bit. Again, like I said, lots of horizontal and vertical lines. So if you want to play around with anything that's still wet and sort of try pulling it, make sure you're going in both directions, though, so that it gives that shimmer sort of look where it's going one way and then the other. Should look effortless, though. I shouldn't see... Um, here, let me give you an example. So I'm going to put some yellow on there. <clears throat> I shouldn't see anything that's like this. If you're going to put it on, go one way and then come back the other way. To sort of spread it out in a more of a shimmer look. And really light to the touch. Okay, so if you have um, the blue on, um, now you can maybe just take a little bit of green and mix it with your blue. And then take your brush, sort of tap it on your rag a little bit to get most of that off. And you can lightly add a little bit of this uh, sort of more green color over any of those white spots too. So you can go straight into those white spots with a touch of green. But I don't want to see you like coloring in the spot with green. I want to see you like gently sort of barely touching it in. We're not looking for streaks of green, we're just looking for, you know, a nice mixture of blue and green so it blends well. And then just kind of going over a few, so vertical, I have a few white spots here and there, and uh, I'm just sort of filling them in with this. So I'm going to bring this more close for one moment, 
so bear with the shaky camera. But um, let's see, I can show you this one here. So see how there's a lot of white on my canvas? Just taking a little bit of that blue and green mixture, making sure there's not too, too much on my brush. And filling those spots in. But then also pulling it. You want to pull the paint. You don't want it to be... You want it to blend into the background. So just adding a little bit of interest by touch a touch of green. You can see that. So I'm just cleaning my brush off. It doesn't have to be 100% clean, but I'm just kind of taking off. I can see there's still a lot of blue in there. So I'm just wiping it off. Yeah, it looks pretty clean. So I want to start with a clean brush again. And again, my canvas is pretty dry, so I'm going to spray the bottom part. And I'm going to take white this time. I'm going to put streaks of white. So we're going to do the white on the bottom and we're going to add some blue in there too shortly, but first get your white on. My cat's in here and she's trying to get out the screen. So if you hear a crash, that was her. Okay, so I've got a lot of white on here now. And I'm actually going to add just a tiny touch of blue. <clears throat> That's because this is pretty dry. It's dried on me pretty well. So I'm just going to add a few streaks of blue now. Just here and there. With the same brush. You don't have to clean it off. We're going to mix this all together. So and Maybe something down there. Something there. Maybe a touch there. Now, just like the top, you're just going to pull back and forth like this. Sort of like mowing the grass. You don't want too much overlap. Just want to make sure that you're getting the whole canvas. Oop, I'm getting paint on this. We're going to build it up with some more white. So you put the white on and then you go back and forth. Like that. And it creates these sort of reflection looks, looking points. But we do need to fill in the whole canvas so we are going to end up going back over it like we did the top. And again, you put on some more and you just go back and forth, lightly, lightly. So we're not blending it to look like one light blue color. We're still letting the colors be where they are, where we place them, and lightly going over it. And then I'm going to add a little bit more blue here. As you meet the top, you're going to find there's some spots that you might want to add some blue to. And you can just go straight over top of that too.
So everybody's painting is going to look a little bit different, of course. Depends on where you place your, your blue. Now I'm going to put a little bit of green on, together with some white. Mix that up pretty good. And I'm going to add a tiny bit of yellow to it. A little bit more white. And I'm going to just put maybe a swipe there. There. A couple here. Now unfortunately you are going to have to try to move a little bit quickly at this point because as the paint dries it stops blending so nicely. So I'm adding a mixture of green and white and yellow right now to some of the spots that are white and still you can see the canvas through. Now I'm also going to add just some white. I'm not going to rinse my brush off because we want these colors to blend. So I'm going to go back in and I'm also going to add white. So I've added a mixture of the yellow, green and white that I mixed on my plate right here. And I've gone ahead and I've dotted a few spots and I'm going to use the white and you have to move a little bit quickly because it could dry too quickly for you to be able to blend it. So every time you add um, paint to your canvas, it might be a good idea to stick your brush in some water, but also dab it off on a napkin because you don't want it to drip on your painting, so you don't want too much water. And then go ahead and do the sideways motion to blend these colors in. I'm going to add some more white and so you just keep building it. Your main color on the bottom is white but you want other colors, you want to introduce other colors in there because you want little shimmers of reflections and you want to add it as a straight line. So I'll do that again and you're going to go back and forth like this create these sort of little shimmers in the painting. How's everybody doing? Does anybody want to leave me a comment? Okay, so again, if yours are, are is really wet, you can take a blow dryer to it if you've got like gobs of paint. Um, and then once it is dry, see, I'll show you sort of how you can add and correct things too. So if you're unhappy with yours, um, or if you're happy with yours, keep going, keep adding your layers. Um, we'll do this for another 10 minutes and then we'll start on the lily pads. If you um, feel like yours isn't looking enough like mine or you're not quite happy with it, here are some tips for correcting it. So if this is dry, you can just go back in and add some more blue. If it's not dry, you want to blow dry it so that you have somewhat of a, of a dry canvas to work with for going over top of things. Acrylic's great for that. You um, you really can paint over stuff, you, and it doesn't take too long to dry. So I'm just gonna add those blue streaks again. I'll come in with a little bit of yellow. I'll put it a little bit lower so you can 
and again, it doesn't really matter the positioning. This is all um, reflection of the sky in the water. And then we're gonna do lily pads over top of it so we don't have, this, is, this isn't like the sky, this is just water too. So um, you could be standing at the end of any pond. It doesn't have to be my exact pond. Okay, and I'm gonna add a little bit of white in here too. So I put some streaks of blue, yellow, and white. I'm going to wet my brush just a little bit to help the colors flow, but I'm also going to dab it on a paper towel or a rag so that I don't end up with water dripping down. And I'm just gonna pull it. We're gonna pull those colors back and forth. You can go sort of up upwards too and then pull it like this this is always a good look in impressionism they used um, often used uh, large brushes so the paint streaks you could see them in the skies you it wasn't a flat color it wasn't a matte look so whoops that's a little light for up there I'm gonna add some more blue over that so you can really see um, how there's lots of room for interpretation um, as well as um, creativity and imagination. And you just keep building. If you got those spots on your canvas that are peeking through just a little bit too much go in there and wiggle your brush around and then pull it in either direction so that it, you're re-blending it in now also there's it's nice to have some of these spots that have a little bit more paint on them they'll stand out a little bit in your painting so you don't want to blend them so much that you end up with just like a flat painting you do want to let the paint kind of do what it wants to do. You don't want to tell it to do what you want it to do too much. So you can see my sky really now has a lot of ups and downs, but it's not diagonally. And it's not going over and over the same spot until it's the same blue. It's a lot of just pulling other colors and saying, okay, well, if yellow wants to be there, then yellow can be there. And then this is sort of, um, this was a reflection that I had done previously, so I'll do another one of those to give you more of an idea. And we're just going to paint together for about another five minutes to finish this background. I'm going to turn some music up. Hopefully everybody has gotten up and taken a stretch at some point and also shaken their shoulders out, taking a deep breath and breathe it out.
Okay, I think um, your background should be fairly good. And we're going to get ready for painting the lily pads. So for that, you're going to need the green, white, and yellow primarily. And I sort of given you guys an idea of what to expect um, on the paper when we first started the, 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 uh, the, the video. So some of you were here for that and that's really what we're going to do. I'm just filling in a little bit of white here because I still have a lot of canvas poking through that I hadn't noticed. I was so focused on the top I didn't really complete my, my bottom. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white down there. Now the trick is if you're adding still, you, you want to do it thinly. If your painting is wet, get that hair dryer out and um, Dry your painting right now because we are moving on. Now you can go on forever um, in this uh, in this part, um, but you do need to make a decision. You know what? I'm. I'm done with my background and you can see I'm even having a hard time doing that but I'm done I'm done with my background and I'm ready to move on and what I want everyone to do is if you can get up from where you're sitting except for those of you that probably can't hear me because your hair dryers are on um, get up from where you're sitting and um, step back about five or six paces from your canvas and just take a look at it because that's really how you should be viewing it. When you're up close for long periods of time and you're really staring at your canvas and you can, oh, this is wrong and oops, I did that. But when you stand back really far, you tend to see something different. So um, if you can, leave me a comment to let me know how, is, how do you, what are your feelings so far about how your background looks? Are you happy with it? Is it um, not quite ready for the next step yet? Um, is it surprising to you that um, you've been able to create something with already so much um, interest and beauty?
Okay. Give me a thumbs up if you guys are ready to move on to the lily pads. Okay, I got a thumbs up from one person. Um, not getting any streaks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have to let it dry a little bit more then. If you're just putting it on um, if it's all wet and you're putting um, your uh, paint wet more wet paint on top of wet paint it might just be blending together and um, I can show you one more time so I'll do it with white so I'm just taking some white and I'll add it here and I'll do one there and then lightly so you're not going super back and forth in the same spot and you're not um, going to um, blend it so that it becomes the other color but see this is dry now so actually it's pretty good if you let it dry a little bit and then do it and you want to go both directions so that way, that way, and that way. And then you can go some with what's on your brush too, because you have a little tiny bit on there. You don't need to load it with any more. Um, and you can add some streaks just like that. But <clears throat> it has to be dry. <clears throat> so, Becky, if yours is all blue, you have to let it dry just a little bit. Um, if it's if it's dry like this, see nothing. It's purely dry. If not, get uh, a blow dryer, put it in front of a fan, and let it dry out. Once it's dry, you can sort of even dry brush over top of it for a faster. So I've got some yellowy white, and it's barely on there, like just a little bit of paint. You can come in and. Go sideways, up and down, and you'll add little streaks here and there. And it does have to be dry for when we do the next, um, the next bit too. So I almost have nothing on there. And I'm going to take the camera, I'll put it really close. I hope that helps a little bit. Now, if you only have blue and white you could add a little bit of yellow in there just by doing that with a dry brush on a dry canvas just like that let me know if that worked for you
Okay, I'm going to go in with my flat brush now. Hopefully everybody is, is caught up. Let me know if you're caught up. So this is my flat brush. And... I'm going to do a light, uh, a light green. I'm going to mix up a light green. So some white and green together. And I'm going to use this color just to mark where um, my lily pads are going to be. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow to it. Okay, so now um, I'm just going to map out my perspective. So if my water lilies are going to come up to here, which is about two thirds of the painting up, I'm just going to put a little dot back there to remind myself of where they end. Midway, I'm going to make just one swipe, just a dab, just a touch on the canvas. And then closer up, of course, they're going to be much larger, so I'm going to do a much larger swipe. So smaller circles in the back, larger circles in the front. And this is just going to be the color that I use to map out where I want to put my, um, uh, water lilies. And I'm just going to kind of go to town here. Um, one thing you want to remember is don't do it exactly the same on one side as the other. You do want a little bit of um, variety and balance in where you, you put things, but not overbalanced. So I'll try to go fairly slow for this part in case you want to follow exactly what I'm doing. But I do encourage you to try different things and uh, different placements. So I'm going to have a couple really big ones in the front here. And I'm going to bring some of them right off because the world continues on off the canvas. So this is one little patch. I'm going to do another little patch here, and of course they have to be about half the size of this because they're halfway back. And then just some spots in here. Smaller as you go back. So we'll do one side together and then we'll do the other side afterwards. So we'll do all the lily pads and the lilies uh, first on this side and then we'll go to town on the other side. So just this dabbing technique, just touching the canvas. You don't want them all to blend into each other. We're going to put a few layers on top and then we will blend out the sides.
Can you see I'm coming down with a few? I'm not making a straight line right across. And just some dots in the distance. Nothing too crazy back there. So in the front there I've made one, two, three, four, five, six, seven swipes. And then as I went back I added a little bit extra. So there's more obviously and they're smaller going back. So I'm going to take some of this uh, dark green next. I'm going to add a little bit of dark green to some of them, or all of them really. Um, I'm just going to add a few swipes here and there, right over top of what I've already done. I'm going to let the colors blend together. You do have to work fairly quickly because you want that blending. You want the blending to happen. I'm going to bring the camera fairly close and I'm going to show you up close. Just touch and pull. You can fill in some of the spots in between. I'm also going to go in there with some yellow. I haven't cleaned my brush off. I'm just scooping up a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to add a little bit of white, same, same way I was adding it before. I'm going to add a little bit to some of these. That little touch. And this can come right off. see colors just start to blend and it gives that impression of lily pads on a pond and one of the interesting things too is you know some of it you can't tell whether it's above the water or below the water um, so what I like to do is um, leave it as you know a guess but also with the paint, a little bit of um, the paint that I've already been using, again with a dry brush, kind of go in and 
add some bits and pieces of reflection. And you do that just by going horizontal and just touching the canvas here and there. Maybe there's some spots that are still show showing through and you can take this opportunity to um, fill them in with a touch of the green. Again, you can probably go on forever building up your your lily pads. And I'm going to add a little bit more green over here now. down just softly and then stepping back a little bit see what it looks like from far away I think I'd like a little bit more green here Okay, so we will keep going for a little bit on this side and you'll see it start to emerge a little bit for you. Um, so you can go towards um, the middle more if you'd like. So if you wanted a little bit of patch right there in the middle you can do that and again adding little bits of reflections nice with the dry brush sort of using the paint already on the brush or on the canvas to create a little bit more reflections the ones at the front I like to round them a little bit I still like to leave them as Sort of a guess as to what they are or where they begin and where they end but I do like to give them a little bit of roundness and then I might hit them with a little bit of white and green drag some of the color add another one right there and maybe another one right there And then I'll go over and sort of make sure that they're blending into each other a little bit. Now your pads might be a little bit darker than mine or lighter and that's fine.
And you do want to make sure that you're not just doing lily pads, but that you're also um, adding uh, reflections as you go too. So what I mean by that is I'm going to do lily pad right here. But then afterwards, I'm going to use some of the paint to make sure that I put a little bit of a um, little soft bit of it into the, uh, the water too. You can always pull in a little bit more white too if you want to help that flow a little bit. Just clean your brush off and then you can scoop up the white. And it'll be, it'll mix with the green, but it'll be a little bit whiter than if you hadn't cleaned the brush off. You can do that. here too just so it's not alone and then you're really just using the greens and the blues or the greens and the yellows and the whites to create the illusion of depth as you go back so let me know how you're doing with the lily pads I want to um, introduce a little bit of red now and I don't want uh, to get too far ahead if you're still working on your greens. I'm just gonna there's a lot of blue and green on here so I'm just gonna add a little bit of red I've just sort of taken a tiny little bit onto onto my brush and I want to take most of it off just so it's just a little hint of it on there and I'm gonna add a little bit into a white spot on one of my areas so again I'm gonna take the camera up closer Bear with me here. As we get nice and close. Just a tiny little hint, a dry brush of it. And what that's going to do is it's just going to make the greens pop a little bit more. And you can play around with that. Don't add too, too much. You can see I've done a couple spots here and then I added a little bit here. I'm just going to touch up the really far ones. in with a couple of different tones of the green and the yellow and I am going to place 
a water lily all the way back there. So I'm using my round brush. I'm going to dip it in the white. So I've got a nice little amount on the end. And my first water lily is just going to be a dot back here. It's just a dot. And then of course as we get fo um, come forward and get closer, uh, they do become larger so you'll have, you'll be hinting at it here. So you might want to do two dots and pull them together or three dots and pull them together. And then I'll bring this closer so you can see what I did. And then as you get even closer, they're going to get a little bit bigger. So maybe one, two, three, four lines that come together. So a dot, three lines, four lines using your round brush. And then in the front, course it's going to be your largest one and we'll just start by making it a little bit like double this size but maybe even a little bit bigger so one and then from the other way two and then Maybe we'll do one, two, and I'll do this again so that you can see it on another one too. So we're creating a silhouette of the water lily. So we want some going straight up and then as it opens, the petals sort of fall open a little bit more on a, on a, um, a curve. And then the closest ones to the lily pad almost come straight out, but they still curve up. And what I like to do with the ones really close is give them a color. So this one, I feel it's going to be mm, pink. So I'm going to get some red on my brush, maybe a little, mix it with a little bit of white to prepare it. There's white already on the canvas and if it's still wet it will blend together. So I'm just going to trace over those lines, not exactly, sort of letting the layers come out. And then just touching it up here to bring it all together. And also adding another layer of white just to give it a little bit of dimension and playing around so that it looks like there are multiple leaves on it or petals I might even add one more to the side letting the tip of the brush make the tip of the petal Hi Sylvia, I got your picture, or Sylvana.
Is it if your pitcher is dry sylvana, you can go over top of it with a little bit more white and yellow because you have a lot of blue, but maybe a little bit more white and yellow in the background. And then if you have a hair dryer, just dry it and then you can start on your lily pads. We just did one side, so by the time you're finished um, adding more color and drying it, we should be on the other side and you can follow along on that side to learn how to do them. Okay, so I've added a few white um, and one pink uh, water lily. I'm going to add um, some yellow ones. So again, just dipping in the yellow paint, you have um, a yellow pointed brush and I'm going to add a few just dots. And then um, one with three petals over here. And I will add a four petal one among here. See, the trick is to make sure that they're staggered. They're not all just straight down from each other. You want to pick spots that, um, are a little bit either to the right or the left of the last one and then forward. Okay, if you're if you are frustrated with the background, um, what I would suggest is paint the top third all the way down to here blue and then this part add all white so about half the painting blue half the painting white and then once that's fairly dry take a large brush and put some uh, yellow and white together and make it almost dry and then go over the canvas with a dry brush and I'll show you what I mean so if you've painted all of this blue and all of this white of course when you get to the white you could add a few swipes of the blue into it but then just take the yellow and um, make it into like a dry brush so barely anything on it and then you can add your yellow like this so you're ending up with less paint if it's been too wet this is a a good way of adding that yellow in without having to add a ton of paint and waiting for it to dry again. And this video will be um, on this feed but also on my YouTube so um, if you fall behind you can watch it later. But yeah I would do maybe just blue all the way down to here and then white and then um, when they do meet the middle, make sure that you're blending them together and then go over it with a dry brush with the yellow and a dry brush with, you know, maybe some blue down here and it will create that look. Because I did blend it at first, but then I did take a dry brush with lots of different colors and I went over top of it once it was dried. I hope that helps. Yeah, your canvas may have been um, your your canvas may have been a little too wet to start with. Sorry to hear hear that, Savannah. So for anybody who is I am over here you can do the same thing you did on this side on this side uh, but just remember that 
you don't want it to be exact you want it to be a little bit different here and there so let me just get another small canvas and I'm going to quickly go over the steps for you one more time on a smaller canvas and you can just um if you're starting over okay so I've got a blank canvas here and I'm going to quickly um, sort of on hyperspeed go through the steps again So I've got this canvas here and I'm just going to give it a, a mist. So like I said, my studio is really hot so I tend to put a little bit more water than if you were just in a nice, um, if you were just in your dining room or backyard um, doing this painting. So just keep that in mind when you're adding. and. I'm going to grab a different brush. There you go. This is a little bit older, but it'll work. Okay, so I'm taking my my um, larger brush. And I'm going to add blue. And I'll bring this close so you can see and I'll turn it sideways so you can see how much I have on there. So I'm adding my blue. The same brush I'm going to add some yellow. I'm going to rinse my brush off just a little bit. Hello, Sue from New York. You're welcome. I try. I understand the frustration because I'm self-taught as well. So a lot of what I do um, comes from the perspective of being frustrated at one point. So totally understand. So. I have added those two colors. I'm going to add my white on the bottom. And I understand it's hard because we're on Facebook Live too, so sometimes I don't see your um, comments right away, but I'll, I try to keep an eye out. Okay, and then we're just going to go back and forth. Pulling the paint, like it, I like to liken it to a lawnmower just because we don't want to go over the same spot too many times back and forth, but we are going back and forth. And then you do that once, you add more white to any spots that. are still white and you wipe your brush off because you don't want too much blue on it. So this is my brush now. I've wiped it off a fair amount. And then I go back and forth like this. And then I find as I'm doing this, okay, there's white spots. So then I have to go back in with my blue. That's a big gob. And put more blue in. And while I'm putting blue up here, I also want to make sure that I have a few reflections down here, so while I'm doing it up there, I'm just going to add a few spots down here, and I'm going to add a little bit more into the yellow so it blends nicely. I'm going to try again until my background is completely covered, and the world, there will be some white spots, so I'm going to really put my... Uh, wipe my brush off if I have too much white on it because I do want the sky to be or the reflection of the sky to be blue but I will kind of force it in there 
but by doing that we still need to make sure that we have this sort of up and down cross hatch happening very lightly because you don't want to blend it all together just add more paint instead on those spots so let me know in the comments if um, this really quick sort of run through of the background helped at all Yeah, definitely the techniques can be used in the future. Like I said, um, it's a lot of dabbing and impressionism, it seems easy, but it's not. It's a technique, it's a learned, a learned technique. And if you've added too much at this point, you'll know because um, nothing is drying. But if it's drying at this point, you've probably added the right amount of paint. If it's not drying, this is where you would go grab a, a blow dryer and really dry the background before you went to onto the water lilies. It's a light touch when you're you're adding little bits over top of dry areas. It's a lot of cross hatching, so one way and then the other. Yeah, and it might not your first time you might not, you know, get exactly what you're looking for, but you'll have some of the tools uh, to try again. So you just find a picture of a pond maybe and try to mimic that. So that would be a really quick background. The trick is not to worry too much because the colors are going to, you know, do what they want to do anyway. This is, there's no right or wrong with this style, but you do have to be sort of light with the brush. So now my background's on, um, I can start adding a few colors over top with a, with a dry brush so I can start adding those little hints of colors over top, but it does have to be dry. And it, it doesn't have to be perfect and it won't be the same every time. So this one's a little wet, so I'm going to work on the dry one. And I'm going to do the other side of the water lilies. So if you missed out on how to do the water lilies, um, this is a good chance to just see it again. And if you're done one side and you want to move on to the other side, uh, and you've already done it, that's great. But if you're waiting for me, I'm about to do it. Just going to check and see if there's any more uh, questions. Doesn't look like it. Okay, so again, I'm just making green with a little bit of yellow and some white. I'm going to mark where I want my lily pads to be first, and then I'll go in there with several different colors. So I'm using my flat brush. I'm going to load it up, and I'm going to start um, sort of further back with some small spots.
and then your circles get bigger as you come forward so a little bit bigger and then even a little bit bigger there and then I think I'll have some over here that are just a tad bit bigger than those ones And then, of course, larger ones in the front, so bigger circles in the front. You guys are very welcome. No child left behind. Well, maybe a few. <laughs> but that's okay. The video is always there. And I know I've been there. I've been frustrated trying to get the perfect sunset or somebody made it look super easy. And then, um, you know, I was like, I'm done with this one and then like I think about it overnight and I'd wake up and I'd be like you know what I'm gonna try it again and I'd try it and I get a little bit better each time um, but the more you learn how to do this technique the more you're gonna be like wow it's just dabbing it's just smearing and dabbing and um, it's about how we how we label things in our in our minds sometimes so I'm going to go back in with a little bit of a darker green here, following the size pattern that I've made for myself as well as filling in some gaps. Again, it's just that touch technique. Touching the canvas, smearing the end a little bit. You can come back in and add a little bit of color underneath it. Create a little bit of a, a reflection in the water. The dry brush. I like to add white to it when I'm doing something like that just to soften it up. And always diagonally and then of course we're gonna add some yellows and you can take your time with this I like to add a little bit of white or a really, uh, a really uh, muted white as well. But just play with your colors. If it looks good to you, then it's fine. Find whatever colors you're using. spots on the other side too. When they're floating on the water they appear a little bit lighter and, and uh, the ones that are living underneath the water do appear a little bit darker so if you want to get a little bit more technical on your painting. And again, the ones that are closer to the front, I like to give them a little bit of a rounded edge. Like a circular edge. I just think it's, um, it's 
a little bit nicer to have something a little tiny bit more detailed at the front. Touch up this middle piece. And go add a little bit more over here to the dark green before going and adding a little tiny bit of red over here, too. Great, Allison, I'm happy, and, and Becky as well, that you guys enjoyed the class. Right, I'm just going to add a little bit of red to this side. With the dry brush again. I'm not going to go too crazy because the red is just to break up the green a little bit. Not really to do a red um, lily pad. And then I like to soften some of my edges and add a little bit of a little bit of reflection here and there. This dry brush is really nice for doing this type of thing. No paint on it at all. You're just using what's already on the brush and and in the painting. In some of these lighter areas, I like to make sure they have a little bit of reflection of the green. And again, it's an impression, so you don't know, is it reflections? Is it more water lilies? Like, what is it? So, you can go on forever doing that sort of uh, dry brush technique. And then I'm just going to finish off now with my water lilies on this other side. And they're just dots in the back and as you get forward you might have um, a flower with three petals and then as you get closer four petals and as you get even closer a little bit more detail on the flowers and always remember you want to add just a touch of a, of a reflection there too just using what's on your brush and Maybe in the painting already. And over here, I don't see added much of anything over here, so I'm just going to use my finger to smudge that. And then I'm going to make this one purple, actually. Goodbye, Karen. <laughs> Okay, and there we go. 
adding it on top of the white, letting them blend together. And then going back in with some more white. The little ones closer up are three steps, but they look really good. Once you finished the third step. You're using the tip of the brush to make the tips of the flowers, so you're letting it help you create that. I'm going to bring that closer. And I think I want a few more purple, and, and then I'll probably just take a quick look at it, but I think it's pretty done. So I know this one was challenging, um, but now you do have the tools so I would explore um, doing some uh, impressionism water lilies maybe at the park grab a, a canvas and some paints and sit under a pavilion maybe there you go so that is my last water lily and I will hold it up for you guys to see. Okay, so those are all in there. Lots of water lilies in this one. And then of course you can go through, it could go on forever like I said, you could um, add you know, different layers to the water lilies, reflections in the water, anytime I add a flower I want to be sure that I'm adding some sort of reflection underneath it. I like to use my um, flat brush for that. Yeah, and that's it. So um, if you feel comfortable sending me a picture of your your painting, that's great. You can leave it in the comments here as well. And I will see you next time. I hope that you enjoyed this and uh, that you had a little bit of fun doing it as well. I know some people found it, sorry, as I adjust this, <laughs> some people found it a, a wee bit frustrating, but um, I understand completely. So I'm just happy we made it to the end together, and uh, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope to see you next time. Have a great rest of your day.